So here's the state change cycle. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're reaching back to, to like grade five, six, seven, eight. So back in grade five, six, seven, eight, you said that there was one state likely called starts with a G. Yes. Yes. Gollum. What was the other state? The next state. Liquid. Okay. Oh, you, you're going too fast. This is too quick. What's the third one? Solid. Solid. You know, we're, we're, we're going to ignore the fourth state. Thank you for bringing up plasma. And we're also going to, we're also going to ignore the fifth one. What's the fifth one, Sen? Yeah, the, the Bose-Einstein condensate. We're going to, we're going to ignore those two uh, exotic matter states. We call them exotic. Yeah. Ooh, you can look that one up on your own time. All right. I want to talk about heating up or cooling down. When I go to get from gas to solid, am I heating up or cooling down? Cooling down. When I go from liquid to gas, sorry, from solid to liquid, am I heating up or cooling down? Liquid to heating up. From liquid to solid? No. Cooling down? Is that right? Yeah? Liquid to solid. Question us. <laughs> what about from gas to liquid? Yikes. What's that? Cooling down. Alright. What do you call it when you go from a liquid to a solid? Melting. Oh, don't lie. Liquid to a solid. Solidification? Solidification could be. Could say solidification. Well, it's freezing if we're talking about uh, water and a few other substances, but solidification, nice general term. Solidification. What would you call it when you go from a gas to a liquid? Condensation, yeah. Okay, condensation. What about when you go from a gas to a solid? Sublimation. Yeah, you know, some people say sublima sublimation definitely from a solid to a gas, and then some people uh, say sublimation is what you both call a gas to a solid, and when you call it, when you go from a solid to a gas, and then some people say uh, maybe we should come up with another word, and instead of saying sublimation for both of them, they'll say deposition for when you go from being a gas to a solid, because it's depositing directly as a solid from a gas form. So I, I'm going to use deposition, <coughs> but I, I recognize that some people say sublimation for both. <coughs> All right, so that's the cooling down one. Let's do the same thing, but for warming up, because I'm going to run out of space if I try to do both on the same wheel. So from solid to gas, <coughs> from liquid to gas, and from solid to liquid. Let's name these guys up. What do you call it when you go from solid to gas? You just told me what it was, Chris. Sublimation. Sublimation. And like I say, some people use sublimation as well as deposition, but, or instead of deposition. All right, solid to liquid, what do you call it? Melting. Melting. Well, melting or liquefaction, yeah. Yeah, liquefaction would probably be the nice general one that would go along with solidification. But. Uh, and from liquid to gas. Evaporation. Evaporation, yeah. <coughs> right? So we got liquefaction, sublimation, evaporation, solidification, condensation, and deposition. Right? En français. Or Spanish, I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. It could be any of those those languages that you the Ashians so much. 
All right, so we've got all these different changes of state. And that's great and everything, but it, it wouldn't be grade 11 physics if we stopped at grade 5, right? Doesn't this kind of look like grade 5? What grade is this? It could be. Oh, grade 8? Oh, it depends on your school, I suppose. Here's what I want to do. Let's talk about a graph, because that, that's the way physics talks, right? Graphs. So on the vertical axis of this graph, I'd like you to write temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay? And I want to put some critical points on this graph. I'd like this to be zero degrees. And I'd like up here to be 100 degrees. And you know what, just for kicks, let's make this be minus 20 degrees. We could keep on going. And I'd like this to be an energy graph for water specifically. You know, Celsius based a lot of his stuff on water, and water's so abundant. Water's a good one to pick on, because we're very familiar with it. So energy. Yeah, it was his last name. Well, it's, you know, it's like so many of these things that get invented by somebody, or discovered by somebody, or whatever, and then they get named after that, that person, and it's hard for you to dissociate the discovery or the invention with the last name. So like, for example, the crapper. Uh, that's somebody's last name. Crapper. Seriously. What's a crapper? A crapper is a toilet invented by Mr. Crapper. What? That's the truth. Okay. Look, a little bit of trivia for you, okay? But so, some people get these names mixed up with the concept. Celsius was a guy's last name. Okay? Crapper, guy's last name. Okay? Yeah, go look it up. I know, I'm, I'm teaching a lesson about names. Crapper. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, get it cooled down. Yeah. It's All right. So we got an energy graph for water. An energy graph for water. Here's what I want to propose to you. What you thought before is this. I'm going to lay down my pencil for what maybe you might have thought before. What you might have thought before is that as you increase the energy, and this is the thermal energy axis, as you increase the thermal energy in something, its temperature just goes up. You know, E equals MCT, we've talked about that before. As I increase the temperature, then the energy is going to just go up, or if I increase the energy, then the temperature is going to go up nice linear fashion. Turns out that it's a little more interesting than that. Yeah, you need a bendy pencil, or I'm just going to draw it. Turns out that while the water's frozen solid, it does go up like that. But then what's neat, something neat happens. Once it gets up to the zero point, it actually takes a little bit of extra energy. Notice I'm increasing along the energy axis to break that solid up into a liquid. That's the latent heat that's required to break up that solid thing into a liquid. Break down the crystal lattice. Have you guys talked about crystal lattices in, in chemistry class? Can you imagine that there's, some, there's something kind of like an architectural structure that keeps a crystal held together? And in this stage right here, we're breaking down that crystal structure, the architecture. We're breaking down the architecture, shaking all the little molecules out so that they'll get loose and turn into liquid. And as the liquid increases its thermal energy, it's going to increase steadily, steadily, steadily its temperature. But then another interesting thing happens at 100 degrees Celsius. What happens then? It stops carrying on like this. What happens to its state if it's water? So yeah, it's going to start boiling and it's going to start to evaporate fairly quickly, right? So just like it took a little bit of extra en energy to shake apart the crystal architecture to get it to become water, it takes a little bit of extra energy to shake the water out of its liquid pool and escape away as a gas. And this again is called latent heat. And then once it's a gas, it'll just keep on getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Well, yeah, until it gets to be plasma, sure. Okay, but we won't talk about what happens in the zigzag of this energy chain for plasma. So here's what I want to propose. If I'm going up this part, the change in energy, delta EH, 
is equal to the mass of the substance times its heat capacity. And in this case, the heat capacity of ice. You know the heat capacity of ice and the heat capacity of liquid water are different? Yeah. You, maybe you see it, saw it in the textbook reading. But Isn't it like half? Well, it's not a nice, tidy number like that. But it, they're, they're different. And if I wanted to talk about the change in heat energy during this stage, I could calculate the change in heat energy for really cold ice to warm ice, which would be just around the zero mark. There's actually colder ice than zero, OK? Get down colder. And if I wanted to talk about how much energy I could pour into liquid water, again, mass times heat capacity times delta T for liquid water. And you have to look up the heat capacity for liquid water. Again, in your textbook, referenceable value. And if I wanted to figure out how much energy goes into raising a sample of steam up a certain temperature, same thing. So we got sea ice, sea water, and sea steam. But what about the energy at this point here and this point here? Like it's got to come from somewhere, right? So we've got to put more energy just to change the state. Turns out you need more energy just to change the state. So we talk about this guy here as being an energy that has to do with, uh, well, fusion. Because you know if you, you fuse those waters back together again, it makes ice. So we call it the energy for fusion. And up here, we talk about this energy being the energy that's required to achieve vaporization. So the vaporization energy. Fusion energy and vaporization energy. Notice, at this point here, it doesn't change temperature. It's just the energy that allows the state to change, not to actually raise the temperature. So what we said previously was that any time you add thermal energy, you're going to change the temperature. Not true along here. Not true along here. The temperature is staying the same during those two parts of this graph but I am adding energy as I travel up the graph, okay? 